Hey, what's up, my fellow free thinkers out there in this infinite universe? This is Chris, and this is my channel, Barn on 11970. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to another vlog and what I have to say. And hopefully what I say will resonate with you, or at the very least, help you to think in a different way. With that being said, we're going to be discussing a little bit about, as you can see in the picture, picket signs, protesting, and even on when they unfortunately come to riots. Why the powers that be, whether it be corporates, corporations, or governments in particular, why they absolutely love when you do these things. Now, the first thing I want to say is I understand why people do it. They're frustrated. They want to feel like they're doing something and they're trying to do something good. So I don't want to take away from the reasoning why most people do it. Obviously, there are a few bad apples that always, always spoil the tree or at least try to, but I understand why people do it because they're trying to share their frustration with the world. But I'm going to explain to you how it is not only not helpful, but actually hurtful, and it actually helps the very people you're protesting against. So before I get into that, I want to put it in a way that most people will just see in a silly way, because if you put things in different perspectives, it will help you to comprehend it a little bit better. So keep this in mind it's, and take it with a grain of salt. Think of a person just standing at the bus station, whether it be male or female, child, adult, whatever, it's irrelevant. But you're just standing there and all of a sudden a person comes up to you while you're standing there, stands next to you, and just starts punching you repeatedly in the arm. Now, just imagine, because I'm sure you probably don't like what's happening, Instead of you doing something to stop it or avoid it, you just hold up a picket sign that says unfair. Do you think that's going to change the pain that you are feeling from this person repeatedly hitting you? Not at all. So yes, you are sharing your frustration, you are sharing your thoughts to the world by holding up a sign, but it's not stopping or changing anything, because if that person is not affected by that sign, they're going to continue to do what they're doing. And that's why, as much as I understand the reasons why people want to protest, how it helps the very people that you're protesting against. Think of it this way, and I've used this as an example, so I'll do it again. If you are, if you have a, uh, just a cell phone, I'm going to use that example again. If you have a cell phone and you're working with, um, they're, they're called ABC Corporation, and you're used to paying $25 a month for your service, and they decide to raise it to 200 Now, you can go with hundreds or even thousands of protesters to their main office and hold up picket signs saying how unfair. Now, keep in mind, that business can charge whatever they want. They're not doing anything wrong. I'm sure people may not like what they're doing. But if you are protesting, but yet still paying the bill for whatever excuse, because people always say, well, I don't like this, but, or I'm not, I'm with these people, this bad, I'm in this bad relationship, but and they always come with, up with an excuse. So if you sit there with your picket sign saying how unfair it is, and you're still paying the bill, no matter how you justify, well, you know, I've had the number for a long time, or, you know, I've been with this company for a long time, and it's so difficult to change numbers, and I have business cards, blah, blah, blah. If you don't change what you're doing, and you continually give them money, what do they care? Because the purpose of a business is to make money. And if them increasing how much money they get does not stop you from continually giving them the money, well, what incentive do they have to change? Now, you could sleep out there for days, weeks, months, and all you're going to do is attract the attention of the media. Now you're giving them free advertisement. So everybody will have ABC Corporation on their mind because one after another, the television networks will all be broadcasting and drilling ABC Media this, ABC Media that. And you get that stuck in your head. Now you're thinking about that company. So if you want something to change, holding up picket signs, again, nice idea. You're trying to do the right thing. You're trying to express 
how you feel, but you have to hit them in the wallet. Because if you and a bunch of those customers from ABC Corporation, if they made the true stand by saying, I don't like what this business is doing. It's unfair how much they've raised it with nothing, no new services, no nothing. They just decided to raise the price. Well, we're all not going to continue the service and we'll go elsewhere. Now that company has two choices. They can continue their prices that they're charging and lose customers by the hundreds, if not thousands, and then eventually go out of business because it doesn't matter how much you charge for something. It's how much somebody's willing to pay for something. So if they continue to overcharge to the point where people are leaving left and right, well, they're no longer going to get the revenue they need and they'll go out of business. Or they can say, all right, these people are not willing to pay the price that we are trying to charge them. So we better lower it again. Or give them better service to justify the new increase. So either way, you're making a change. So now let's take that with what governments do. Because it gets a little trickier here. Because when you riot, well, not riot, when you protest, it does bring awareness. So some good can come out of it. But if you're in front of the White House saying, for example, the, let's just say the taxes are too unfair. You, they think they're unfair. They're too high. There's too many. There's an old saying from a Rothschild. I think it was Nathaniel Rothschild. It could be wrong. So correct me if I am because it's not really relevant or major big deal to this situation. But they made a famous quote that says, let them march all they want as long as they pay their taxes. So if you're sitting there with a the picket sign sleeping outside for days, weeks, months at a time with fellow protesters saying unfair taxes and yet you're still paying them well what incentive do they have to change anything then you bring media you bring it to the attention and sometimes good can come out of it and then sometimes what they love to do is infiltrate the peaceful protests now what does that mean what they will do is hire people to go in to cause trouble because when you have a group and you have a group mentality, emotions formulate, and it's almost like a singular consciousness. And if you get one or two people that start edging people on, all of a sudden you start building up the emotion. And when the emotion starts to get to the point where people get angry and frustrated, especially when the longer the protest goes, the more emotion is going to be affected from lack of sleep, lack of comfort. You know, lack of uh, sufficient food or just, uh, you know, lack of lots of things. And all of a sudden, a few bad apples start spoiling a tree. And that's why you'll see, for example, the police presence. And they come in full riot gear or they come standing on their horses or their, their military gear. It's because they're in there to intimidate you and create emotion. Because they want you to get violent. That's why they instigate, hoping that somebody will throw the first rock. And some of the people that infiltrate are the ones that do it, but not everybody is an infiltrator. Some people just love to cause drama and pain. And they might think, oh, well, I'm in the middle of a crowd of 10,000 people. Let me throw a rock. No one will know it was me. And then next thing you know, there's chaos. Now, why do governments love that? Well, if you know anything about the system, how they profit off of people, especially by imprisoning them, well, when you fall into their traps where they get you emotionally involved and get to the point where you go from a peaceful protest into a dangerous riot, well, then the police come in and arrest people. And then they have justification for new laws. And it can go all the way from, you know, just a regular problems with single people to maybe somebody brings a gun. Now, all of a sudden, they can say, oh, look, look what guns do. We need to ban these things. Look at the people that got hurt. They always take... Now, I'm not suggesting they instigate things all the time, but they will take advantage of situations. So we have to, as intelligent, free-thinking people, need to understand that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. People have been protesting for probably centuries, but especially recently, since the 60s, people have been doing lots of protesting and not many things change. Now, I'm not suggesting things cannot change. It's not always, you know, you protest, it's never heard, or there's always a riot. Sometimes 
It does work. But we have to think on a grander scale. The ones that work are usually smaller things where it's, you know, something where they just feel like, oh, I don't want the publicity. You know, let me fix this problem. So not all of them are bad, and I'm not suggesting that. But when it comes to governments and major corporations treating us unfairly, if we continue to play their game and their scam and their Ponzi scheme, they don't care what we do. Do you think they care while they're in their million dollar mansions watching on some 200 inch plasma TV, watching a bunch of people sleeping in tents outside in the cold and the rain for weeks at a time? They'll probably find it as entertainment. So it's that whole drowning in good intention. But make no mistake, if we want real change, sometimes we have to sacrifice. Because like I said in the example in the beginning, you know, if you're just standing there and somebody's repeatedly punching you in the arm and you don't like it, well, if you're just sitting there saying, oh, this is so unfair and I don't like this and why does this have to happen to me and I wish he would stop and I can't believe they're doing this and you're not doing anything to stop it, well, you're the one that feels the pain. Because what if that person is enjoying the pain they're putting on you? You're not blocking it. You're not running away. You're not trying to stop it. You're just complaining. And a lot of people have good intention and feel like, well, I did my part. But if nothing got changed and people got hurt or imprisoned and new laws were created, which restricts more and more of our freedoms, then there was change. But was it good? So it's time if we are to reach a different level. We cannot continue to play on the same game that they have been rigging for centuries. When you don't research history, you're doomed to repeat it. So think of it, for example, if you gamble at all. Let's say you play blackjack. You sit at the blackjack table and you notice that the dealer slips a few cards in every now and then or takes the cards out of the uh, card holder out of sequence, slides one underneath, and you notice this. You could say whatever you want, they'll deny it. And without you being able to really prove it, then it's just hearsay. If you continue to play that game at that table, knowing that the person is cheating and the game is rigged, is it their fault or is it your fault? It's all about taking responsibility because you can sit there the whole time and say, oh my God, I can't believe he's cheating. And oh, didn't you see what he just did? And oh, you guys are stealing my money. And I want this. And I want the police here. And they're going to throw you out. And they're going to steal your money. But if you continually give them the money every time, expecting them to all of a sudden have a consciousness and a conscience, you know, a fool and their money is soon parted. Do you know how to stop it once you see the game? You get off from the seat. You walk away from the table. And you leave. Sometimes you got to cut your losses. So when it comes to countries and how they treat us, they treat us that way because we accept it. Now, that doesn't make them right. I'm not here saying, oh, you know, they, they should get away with it. But what I'm saying is if we accept it, we are the ones that suffer the consequences. Like, for example, I'll give you another example. You and I are walking down the street. We are walking into a park. We walk over a bridge. And there's a person there, and he starts talking to you. For some reason, he convinces you of how amazing it's going to feel if you jump off that bridge. And he's talking so excitingly. He's like, you know, I've seen hundreds of people do it. If you jump off that bridge, it's going to be the best experience you've ever had. You're not going to fall down and hurt yourself. It's going to be great. It's going to, you're going to stop in the middle of the air. I don't know what it is about this, but there's some, something magical there that will stop you from falling. And all you have to do is believe and, you know, God is with you. And, you know, trust me on this. I've seen it before. Just jump off the bridge and you'll be fine. And you will thank me for the experience. And somehow this person convinces you that it's a good idea to jump off that bridge. So you do it. Now, he probably is pretty well aware that the fall that you're about to experience is not going to stop and it's not going to end well. He may find it funny. 
he may have gotten paid by somebody to dare him to do it. Is he wrong for what he did? Yeah, it's not a nice thing. But who is feeling the pain? Him or you? Because you chose to trust that person. Now, he could have scared you off or paid you money. Here, here's a million dollars. I will give you a million dollars if you jump off that bridge. Doesn't matter how they do it. We cannot control what others do, but we can control what we do. So is it unfair what governments have been doing to their people for thousands of years? I would say so. But we accept it. We allow it. We all feel the need. We want to be free, but yet for some reason, we want them to close the gates that enslave us because of the fear of the unknown of what we would have to do on our own. People want to be led for some reason. How can you have freedom when you're always looking towards a leader or someone else to fix everything in your life? And until we can decide we can do this on our own, it will be like a prisoner that's been in jail for majority of their life. Let's say at the age of 18, they were sent to a life of imprisonment. And from the age of 18 till the age of 80, He's been in jail, fed when they tell him to be fed, lights are off or on when they tell him to, shower when they tell him to, providing food, clothing, blankets, everything that they need, their structure of when to work, when to rest, when you can go outside, regulation. And then one day, on his 80th birthday, they decide, you know what? You're, uh, Parole has come in, you're a free man. And they open the door, and that that person who is so used to being regulated for the majority of his life will curl into a bowl in the corner of that cage screaming, shut that door. When and if we ever break free, there won't be credit cards, there won't be social security, there won't be a lot of the things that we take for granted. But there also won't be the wars and the murders and the theft and the poverty. You have to sacrifice. Otherwise, what is it that you really want? You can't say you want to be free, but then you want everything given to you. They give to those who they know they can enslave. And they trap people based on their, I can't say ignorance, but their... I guess it's the more the Stockholm Syndrome when you fall in love with your captors. You can't be afraid to be on your own. Because then you need to be led. And if that's the case, then why complain? Because we're giving them the freedom to do all these things and we don't complain. Well, we don't do anything about it. We complain, but we don't do anything about it. And that's why I don't have a bank account anymore. I have a federal credit union. But it's different than a bank. I work for myself, so I don't work for a major corporation. When I make any money at all, I try and turn it into tangible assets like gold and silver, or even like when I talked about how I have a comic book channel, I'm buying things of material. It's taking the currency and turning it into something tangible. So I'm doing my part. My wife and I. We go to a lot of organic stores. We buy from local shops. We're supporting local businesses. I don't own a Visa or MasterCard. I have a card from my bank account. I'm sorry, from my federal credit union account. But I'm not out there spending money that I don't have. If I don't have the, the funds in my federal credit account, I don't buy it. So there is sacrifice to be made. It's like being a heroin addict. If you want to get off heroin, you're going to have to go through withdrawals, and those withdrawals are going to be painful. It's going to be torturous. You're not going to like it. But over time, you will heal and you will pass it. This too shall pass. 
if you continue to take more and more heroin because of that fear of the unknown and that pain you will have to experience. It's just going to get worse and worse until one day you take too much and it kills you. And that is what could potentially happen to this economy and this world economy. Because the reason that collapses could happen throughout history is that not every country collapsed at the same time. And because each currencies were pretty much backed by gold and silver or material things to back up their, their money, real money with, one or two could go and collapse, but the others would continue. Well, since 1971, Richard Nixon convinced the world for the first time in recorded known history that every country on the planet has their currency backed by nothing. So when one falls, they all fall. London Bridge is falling down. So when other people will have an issue with that, because we're talking about a little bit of currency now, They'll always say, oh, look, gold and silver has lowered. And look, the dollar is strong and the economy is sustainable. That is very true. All very true things. But it only takes one incident to change the world and turn it upside down to the point where billions of people could wake up with nothing. I mean, think of it like, you know, those of you who have been listening to my channel for a long time know that my father died in a fire. Well, he died in the in the years of his late fifties. No, it was actually he was sixty four. He was about to retire at sixty five, so he was sixty four years old. So for sixty four years of his life, everything was fine. And then one day he woke up, opened the door, inhaled smoke, and left this earth. It changes that quickly. Think about that the next time somebody tries to tell you, oh, you're making a bad decision. Who cares what anybody else thinks about what you do anyway? It's just their opinion. So there's a lot going on in this conversation. And a lot of my conversations, especially recently, are to make people think. And we need to think differently. They are counting on you to keep falling for the same trick over and over again. It's like watching a lady be sawed in half. When you're a child and you see a woman step into a box and you see this magician saw the woman in half and split it apart, you are amazed by what you see. When you are grown up and you find out, spoiler alert, that there are two women, one in each part of the box, you're no longer fascinated and surprised and shocked by what you see. But just imagine if you were, even knowing the game is rigged. That's how most people are in this world. We sit there with blind eyes. We refuse to understand that there will be sacrifice. You're a heroin addict. You're, you're going to go cold turkey. You're going to suffer through withdrawals. But you will get better, just like the economy. And if we just do nothing but hold signs and, and complain, yes, it's good intention. But it, they love when you do it because you're still paying them. You're still agreeing with their putting you in slavery because you're afraid to end up having to start over because everybody always says, well, what do we do? I don't have the answer to that, but having hope of the unknown, unknown future where there's endless possibilities to me is much more exciting than the crap that we're dealing with now. So we can all do things to improve. Well, we can just continue to look the other way. There's a reason why when you learn CPR and you're, there's an incident where there's a bunch of people around, one of the things they tell you is if you're giving somebody, let's say, mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation and there's a crowd surrounding you, nowadays the crowd will just be too busy filming you because everybody wants the latest YouTube hit. Crazy. But if you just screamed out, somebody call 911. No one will do anything because they'll be waiting to see who will move. What they tell you is, look somebody in the eye and tell them specifically what to do. Otherwise, they'll all stand there waiting for someone else. So we need just one person to stand up and do something. And the rest will follow. And we're waiting. Thanks for watching, guys. This is Chris. This is my channel, Barn on 11970. Hit subscribe, share, like. 
have a great day. Thank you.